About six months ago, I made a video on the Mod Rimf launcher. Back then, it had just released, and I was very excited to make a video about it. First of all, because it was a new launcher, and second of all, because I was starting to get very excited about Mod Rimf as a platform. I showed off the launcher in that video, and ever since then, I've been using it full time as my only Minecraft launcher. So if there's anyone who knows the ins and outs about this launcher, it is me. At least, I like to think so. That is why today, I want to talk about the good, the bad, and if I would actually recommend using it. Make sure to subscribe, you would help me out so much. So here we are in the Modern Launcher. The design and everything like that is pretty much the same. On the way at the top, you have your instances. You can simply create a new one by clicking on Create Profile in the bottom left. Then you can type in the name, choose a loader, choose a game version, and click on Create. And it's as easy as that. If you don't want to create a custom profile though, but you just want to use a mod pack, you can simply navigate to the mod pack by moving your mouse <laughs> and then clicking on install. This will always install the newest version, though let's say I would want an older version of simply optimized, I can simply click on the mod, that will bring me to the mod page, and then when we go to versions, you can see, hey, here we got 1.19.4 versions. I want this one. So then we just click on this little download button, and there we go. Simply optimized is installing and now it is a matter of clicking on play now something that you also have that i didn't point out in the previous video is a console so all the way in the top right you can see which instance you're running right now i'm running instance 1.20.1 but when we click on view logs, you can actually see everything that's happening in kind of a console style, which is really cool. Now, obviously, it is not a console. It are just logs, but it are live logs. So everything that happens with Minecraft and with my mods, I can actually see over here, which can be really handy if you need to debug something. But let's talk about the thing I like the most about this launcher. And that is the fact that this launcher is from ModRimf. And ModRimf is a website for everything. Like straight up, when you go to their homepage, you will see a couple of tabs on the top, which say mods, plugins, data packs, shaders, resource packs, and mod packs. All of those different Minecraft resources can be placed on ModRimf. And now that the popularity of ModRimf is growing rapidly, more and more developers decide to release their new plugins or mod packs or mods on ModRimf instead of competing platforms. I've actually seen a lot of plugins make the switch already. And a lot of resource packs too, by the way, that are only available on ModRimf now. And the curse for page is just that. It's just inactive. Now, because ModRimf hosts all of these different Minecraft resources, you can also add all of them inside of your profiles. So when I go into subscribe and I click on add content, I'm able to choose between mods, data packs, shaders, and resource packs. The most popular ones are automatically shown at the top. But if you can't find it there, you can also just look for a name or you can filter categories. It is super convenient. So let's say I want some optimization mods. Well, I want fast break i want sodium uh, iris of course let's also do lithium entity culling why not ferret core also good optimization mod and there we go <laughs> those are my optimization mods now i have installed iris shaders of course but i don't have any shader packs yet well no worries let's just go to the shader tab and then over here i'm gonna get bsl i'm gonna get unbound i love that one super duper vanilla i've never used it but hey i can give it a try and it is literally that easy so now my shader are installed maybe i also want a resource pack so one of the resource packs i really like to use is uh let's see can i find it there it is faithful 32 so let's just install this one and another one i really like to use is bare bones but when i look up bare bones over here you will not find it you will find some add-ons like bare bones x eating animations or bare bones origin realms which for those who didn't know the creator of bare bones is also an admin on origin realms which is why this makes sense <laughs> but i cannot find bare bones here why is that well that is because bare bones creator has only selected bare bones to be compatible with version 1.20 now the thing about resource packs is they don't get outdated that quickly 1.20.4 and 1.20 they can just use the same resource packs it is not showing up in the launcher even this can be fixed though because what we can do is override game versions simply click on there and then we're gonna select version 1.20. 
20. And there it is. It shows up. Now I can click install. I will get a little error. It's basically ModRinth screaming at me to please not install this resource pack. But I'm gonna do it anyway. And it, it, will, it will just work. <laughs> it will just work fine. Okay, so now you can see everything I have installed here. But of course, this is the ModRinth launcher. Meaning that I'm only able to add stuff that is actually available on ModRinth. So what if I want to add something that is not available on ModRinth? Can I do that? Well, of course you can. You can just open your mod folder. So there we go. We got mods, resource packs, shader packs. These are all installed already. And inside of the mods folder, I can just drag more mods, even if they're not available on ModRinth. That is not a problem at all. What is cool is that even if you install something that is not from ModRinth, you're still able to enable or disable it here. So for those who didn't know, this is actually a disable button. If I don't want to see bare bones anymore, I can simply bloop, and there we go. It will now not show up in my Minecraft anymore. By the way, things like resource packs and shader packs you can add live so while you're playing this instance if midway playing you're like i want another resource pack you can simply open this launcher go to your profile add content then add a brand new shader pack or resource pack and it will immediately show up in game so that is just convenient it's really cool now when in an instant you go to options and then you scroll down a bit over here you're actually able to change your ram so you can just click on override global memory settings and increase or decrease it how you please now you you might be like a hey, Kasasura. So far, you've talked very, very positively about this launcher. Do you have any negative points or things they could improve? Oh, yeah, I do. First of all, the home menu. Why is it like this? The only things it shows is your profiles, which makes sense, and then the most popular mod packs and mods. The thing is, these mods and mod packs are always the same because these are always the most popular ones. I would actually like to see some more diversity in this featured section. Like, simply optimized only disappeared because I installed it. Otherwise, it would still be here because it has been here for months. It would be so cool if these featured mod packs would just switch around every single time you reboot the launcher. Or maybe if ModRinth could somehow check what mods you install frequently and then give you some suggestions of mods and mod packs that are similar or include some of those mods you're using. That would be so cool. And it would also allow you to discover brand new mods and mod packs that you've never heard of. But instead, I just see Kabelman official mod here every single time I launch this game. And Kabelman is cool, but I just don't want to install it right now. But there is no way to tell ModRinth I'm not interested. <laughs> Still, this is taking up 90% of all the space on the homepage. And I think they could do more with the homepage. Now, I'm also saying that because here on the left, we actually got three tabs. One tab is the home tab, which shows your instances and this horrible featured section. And then there is browse, which makes total sense. Over here, you can browse mod packs, mods, data packs, shaders, resource packs, pretty much everything on ModRinth, except for plugins. But then down here, we got the library, which <laughs> is essentially just the same thing as everything you see on the homepage. Now, of course, of course, if you for some reason have 100 million instances, then I guess this is a very nice screen where you can manage all of your 100 instances that you have open at the same time for some weird reason. But as a regular person who has 10 or less instances, this screen doesn't make sense. There's no reason to use it when you also see these instances over here. They're even the same size, like they show the exact same size here or here. It, it doesn't make sense. But then, my biggest complaint about the mod ramp launcher, and this actually has nothing to do with the launcher itself. It has something to do with getting into the launcher, because it is their login system. If for some reason I'm locked out of my mod ramp launcher, meaning I have to log in back again with my Microsoft account so I can play on mod ramp. If that happens, then I can be assured that I will not be able to play Minecraft for the upcoming 30 minutes. I, I just know that. It's not gonna happen. It just doesn't work, man. As soon as you're in the launcher, everything is nice and great and cool, but getting in is a hell. <laughs> A literal hell. So to get into the ModRinf launcher at first, you don't have to log in with a ModRinf account. You have to log in with a Microsoft account. But every single 
time. I click on yes, give access. That's fine. ModRinf will be like, nope, <laughs> error. <laughs> At first, I thought this was a me problem. First, I thought it was my maybe my Microsoft account or maybe my PC. But then I actually complained about this on my Discord server, the Casasora universe, by the way. Make sure to join. It will be epic to see you there. And this is when I discovered, uh, no, no, no. A lot of people are actually facing this issue. Now, also logging into a ModRinf account, 99% of the time will just not work. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I mean. It always says this. <laughs> Fail to log in. Try to resubmit the form. It just will not work. Then it then it says this. What do you, what do you mean? It is the same thing over and over and over again. And I am getting sick of it. Now, by the way, this is not even just a problem on their app. It is also a problem on their website. I am just not getting in. There's always an error going on and it delivers me a headache. <laughs> but as soon as you're in, everything is great now you might also think like hey if you're trying to log into your microsoft account and it gives an error in modrinf doesn't that have to do with your microsoft account well uh, no <laughs> it just hasn't i have authenticated my microsoft account in a lot of places and never has it been any problem at all except for our modrinf and then the final question would i actually recommend using the modrinf launcher if you already like modrinf as a platform and pretty much every single mod you get is from modrinf then I would highly recommend you getting this launcher. Though, if pretty much every single mod and mod pack you play is still from CurseForge, then while you could, in theory, still use the ModRinf launcher, you're probably gonna have a bad time. So it really depends on what type of Minecraft player you are and which mods you're using on a daily basis. But I would say I can already recommend it to 75% of people. And if ModRinf keeps growing over these years, fixes their login system and starts hosting even more mods plugins, resource packs, and so forth, then in an additional six months or one year, I might be able to recommend the ModRinf launcher 100% of the time. Except for when you're using an illegal version of Minecraft. In that case, it will not work. Anyway, that is gonna be it for today. Bit of a different video, but I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do make sure to subscribe to my channel. You would help me out so much by doing that. Also, an absolute massive shout out to my channel members for the incredible support. Thank you guys so much. And then I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.